So imagine looking on the horizon and sunrise is half the sky, okay? That would be terrifying. It, is this even starting to happen? Get ready as we're going to take you on a journey to explain what would happen if Betelgeuse burst right now. This fiery display of power and destruction is nothing like you have ever seen before. From the annihilation of planets to the creation of distant cosmic landscapes, supernovas are the celestial architects continuously shaping the universe's grand design. Ancient civilizations used to view them as omens, while modern astronomers try to understand them to unravel the mysteries of space. Among these giants is the star Betelgeuse, which continues to dim, leading some scientists to believe it might soon turn supernova. And if it does, it might be the brightest supernova viewed from Earth in 400 years. And the nuclear fusion taking place in the core of a dying star can no longer support the outer layers of the star. The core collapses on itself due to massive amounts of gravitation force, causing an extremely violent explosion. During this catastrophic explosion, massive amounts of energy is released. The energy released by a supernova is so enormous that it is equal to the amount of energy our sun would radiate in its entire 10 billion year life. The fact that makes supernovas an important event on the cosmic landscape is their ability to distribute various elements throughout space, which are essential for the formation of planets as well as life itself. Supernovas are also known for the formation of elements heavier than iron on the periodic table. This means that all the gold and platinum jewelry you might be wearing, the calcium enriching your bones, as well as the iron circulating in your blood, all came from a star that vanished in an abrupt and explosive manner. Supernova in historic times. Believe it or not, supernovas have been observed in ancient times as well. Various early civilizations were able to gaze upon the starry night skies and form patterns and constellations amongst the stars as well as notice multiple celestial events which were deemed as good or bad omens. One type of celestial event was the sudden appearance of bright new stars, which we now understand as supernovas. One of the earliest examples of these observations was made by Chinese astronomers in 185 AD. They recorded a bright new star, which appeared out of nowhere in the middle of the sky. It was bright enough to be visible during the day, and it vanished without a trace in eight months. Using the knowledge we have today and our enhanced observational telescopes, we can now rule this event as a supernova, and its remnants known as RCW86 have been observed as well. SN1054, also known as the Crab Nebula, are the remnants of another ancient recorded supernova, which was discovered by Chinese and Arab astronomers in 1054 AD. This supernova was four times brighter than Venus and was visible during the daylight for 23 days. Ancient civilizations might have considered such awe-inspiring celestial events as a sign from a divine creator or maybe even an ominous indication of a grim future, but we now take it as a source of information regarding the formation of new elements and the life cycle of stars. Now on this boundless stage known as our universe, every star comes along to put on a spectacular show and share with us their story. How it is born from a mere cloud of gas and dust, how it acquires such a magnificent size, and how it ends up growing old until the last moment of its life, violently exploding and fading into obscurity. It all starts from a nebula, which is a massive cloud of gas and dust. This is the birthplace of every star, and inside this unique birthplace, the gases and dust begin to collapse upon themselves slowly becoming denser and acquiring their own gravity. After they collapse, they grow hotter and form a protostar. This protostar is the equivalent of a small baby curled up in a cradle slowly opening their eyes to this vast universe. For millions of years, this protostar continues to gather mass from its surrounding nebula, slowly becoming larger. As it ages, the temperature and pressure in its core increase and as the temperature in its core reaches 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, nuclear fusion begins to take place. At this point, the protostar turns into a main sequence star, similar to our sun. Now a sequence star can continue to burn the hydrogen inside its core 
and stay the same for billions of years. But when the hydrogen inside the star's core runs out, which was fueling the fusion reaction, a new change begins to take place. This new stage of the star depends upon its mass. If the star is more or less the size of our sun, its core shrinks and heats up rapidly, which causes its outer layers to expand further. This gigantic star is now called a red giant. Eventually, as time passes, the core collapses and the outer layer of the red giant is ejected out. This forms a planetary nebula, leaving behind a white dwarf in the place of the former red giant. However, not all stars follow this life cycle. Some might end up exploding in a supernova. This has caused a lot of scientists to wonder what really causes these stars to explode in such a fierce display of destruction. It is believed that whether the star goes supernova or not depends upon various factors such as its mass and its composition. The composition and mass of the star also determine which type of supernova it might be. We know from spectral analysis that type 1 supernovas lack hydrogen lines. Another subtype of supernova, which is the most famous subtype, is the type Ia. It occurs in a binary stellar system, where a white dwarf star sucks in the matter of its close-by partner. And once the white dwarf reaches critical mass, it undergoes a thermonuclear explosion, resulting in a supernova. Two other subtypes, called type Ib and type Ic, takes place when the cores of two massive stars, which have shed their outer layers, collapse onto each other. Here, type Ib is considered for the stars, which have shed off hydrogen layer, and for type Ic, helium. Another most common type of supernovas is called type 2 supernovas. For this type to occur, the star must have at least eight times more mass than our sun. Tug of war within the star. For their entire lives, stars undergo a fierce battle of forces within themselves. The force of gravity pulls them inwards into their core and the force created by fusion pushing outwards. As the fuel source for this fusion reaction depletes, gravity wins the battle, causing the core to collapse onto itself. This collapse takes place in a fraction of a second and emits incomprehensible amounts of energy, a supernova. This spectacle is so bright that it outshines the entire galaxy for a short time. Its remnants can make up a dense neutron star, and in some cases, if it was massive enough, it could even leave behind a black hole. These massive explosions are not only an exhibition of power and energy, but also a way of dispersing various materials throughout space, which may act as seeds for future stars, planets, and possibly even life. But here the question arises, where does all the energy released by the supernova go to? Well, most of it gets carried far away by neutrinos. About 99% of the energy from a supernova is released in the form of these particles. Neutrinos are tiny, almost massless particles and are released in huge quantities when a supernova takes place. The speed at which they move is almost similar to the speed of light. The other 1% is released through light and other forms of radiation, like gamma radiation and X-rays. Although supernovas can act as beautiful dispersers of life and precious elements throughout vast distances, they still hold potential dangers in the form of massive amounts of energy and radiation they emit. If a massive supernova would take place near Earth, one of the biggest threats to us would be the damage to our ozone layer. The intense burst of gamma rays would cause significant damage or even the complete destruction of the ozone layer, causing a rapid increase in skin cancer cases for humans and animals alike. This could also result in disruption of photosynthesis in a majority of plant species. In other wood, this would be a death sentence for a significant life form on the planet. On another interesting point, which is worth discussing, supernovas are also considered to create strong gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are distortions and ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by some of the most energetic events taking place in the universe. Gravitational waves were first discussed by Albert Einstein in his General Theory of Relativity, where he proposed that massive accelerating objects like a neutron star or a black hole orbiting each other would collapse space-time in such a way that distorted space waves would emanate from the source. From a source far away, they would not pose any threat to us, 
but we could actually use them as a new form of information gathering throughout vast distances of space. Scientists have already started to detect gravitational waves using incredibly sensitive instruments. This is likely to bring a new age of scientific exploration using gravitational wave astronomy in the near future. Astronomers are keeping a vigilant eye on various candidate stars which have a chance to go supernova soon. Recently, the star Betelgeuse, a red supergiant in the constellation of Orion, has attracted a huge number of astronomers. It is thought to be somewhat near the end of its lifespan. In 2019, Betelgeuse began to dim dramatically, which made some scientists propose the fact that it might soon become a supernova. Interestingly, it soon went back to its usual brightness. The most widely accepted explanation of this event has been that the star probably emitted a large dust cloud, which ended up obscuring its light. This ended up giving us the perspective that it was dimming. After a while, when the dust cloud dispersed, the star went back to its former bright glory. This is still a theory nonetheless, so take it as you wish. The fact still remains the same. Betelgeuse is a highly irregular star. Researchers have identified four different periods in the variations of Betelgeuse, which are 2200, 420, 200, and 30, and 185 days. They said that these phases correspond to the pulsation of the star, in particular, the radio principal mode and first, second, and third overtones. In short, this analysis of pulsation and convection suggests that Betelgeuse is in the late stages of core carbon combustion. Researchers have also pointed out that at this time, the temperature of Betelgeuse dipped by 100 Kelvin, which might have ended with a significant amount of mass ejection from the star. This has caused a huge number of observations to be made and has shifted the eyes of the astronomical community towards it. Betelgeuse possibly could soon go supernova, and we might be able to see it. The study also suggests that it is extremely difficult to predict when a star might go supernova because of their countless variables and unique situations. If it is suspected to go supernova, it could possibly take thousands of years before the event happens. And if it takes place in front of our very eyes, then we are up for fireworks show, which would light up the sky like never before. Thanks for watching.